station of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Lions. It's a very comfortable night for baseball in downtown Cincinnati. It's gotten a little on the chilly side from the last number of days, but we're expected to stay dry. That's the good news in a big series beginning tonight at Great American Ballpark. The team with the best record in all the baseball, the Milwaukee Brewers come a calling to take on the Reds. And look who's back. Hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day. I'm Tom Brennan, and welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. Boy, you look at pitching around baseball. We were in Atlanta and how well they have pitched so far this season. But you look back to this Brewers team, and maybe based on what we saw last year, their superb pitching this year should not come as a great surprise. Well, it's a really the big difference that the Brewers have had this year over last year. Remember last year, they only won 74 ball games overall, but their, and their offense was about middle of the road in the National League. But what they did not have was pitching, especially early in the year. You see pre-All-Star break pitching. That's a team earned run average. After the break, it got a little bit better. But this year, wow, when you've got a team earned run average of 2.8 with the firepower that this lineup has, that's one reason why they are 20 wins, and that is better than any other team in baseball. We'll take a look at the four guys the Reds are going to see in this series. Not a single one with an earned run average reaching 2.9. Well, Marco Estrada, not an overpowering pitcher. Willie Peralta, he can dial it up there in the high 90s. Giovanni Gallardo, you know him. This guy's always on a short list of potential Cy Young candidates if he can stay healthy. And Kyle Loesch, boy, he has been a really good sign for them since they signed him to a multi-year deal a couple of years ago. So these four pitchers know what they're doing. They're all right-handed. The Reds ought to be able to settle in and try to get some offense going. But the Brewers so far have not given up a whole lot. Let's shift gears now to the man on the mound for the Reds tonight and really the only starter who has struggled this season and that is right-hander Homer Bailey. Look inside some of these numbers. Well, you really wonder if maybe the extension that Homer Bailey has signed has been more of an anchor than anything else. Sometimes it happens when a player signs a big deal. He tries to make it all happen at once and show his worth. Well, he's not pitched all that well. Homer has it. And what I've seen from a pitching standpoint from Homer Bailey is that we he throws his slider and his breaking ball where he wants to, as he did against the Chicago Cubs on April the 20th. That's when he gets out, and he gets quality hitters out that way. You'll notice in this little film trip that we have is that these are all off-speed pitches, sliders, breaking balls. He still throws a fastball about 94 miles an hour, but you have to be able to be precision-like with that breaking ball to come make it all come together. Well, Homer Bailey will try and get this series off on the right foot for the Reds, a top team in the National League Central in town. And Jim Day will have more on Ron Renneke's bullpen. They played some long games rolling into this series.
forecast entirely, but the weather gods say no. A spotty sprinkle, a spotty shower possible. Probably won't rain, but there is that very slight chance because we're under cyclonic flow. And cool temperatures, 54 down to about 50 during the game. What did I read today? Brewers' best record in baseball? You know what time it is. P-U-O-S-U. Put up or shut up. I intend to put up. Enjoy the game on Fox Sports Ohio. It's the first time we get to see the Brew Crew this year. GABP Reds baseball coming up on Fox Sports Ohio. And Jim Day with you on the field. You heard the boys talk in the first segment about the starting pitching the Reds are going to face in this series. All four starters they'll see, all with ERAs under 2.9. But... If they cannot go deep in the game, Ron Renicki might have a problem on his hands because it's been a busy bullpen for the Brewers. They have played some extra inning games, and unfortunately for them, they've had to use that bullpen. Twelve innings on Monday, they use six relievers. Eleven innings on Tuesday, five innings of relief needed pitched on that day. And Garza only went three innings yesterday. So perhaps the Reds are catching the Brew crew at a good time. We will find out together. It's the first of four. It's the Reds and the Brewers coming up on your home for Reds baseball. Fox Sports Ohio. Tom Brenneman and Chris Welsh are next with the lineups and the play-by-play -play action. Points Ohio brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further by Cincinnati USA for endless things to do all year long. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. By AT&T mobilizing your world. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good. It's Skyline time. There you get a look at the beautiful skyline of downtown Cincinnati. And a labor arriving crowd here at Great American Ballpark. For the opening game, it is four game series between division rivals and Ron Renneke's starting lineup presented by Mike. A lot of injuries up and down this Brewers lineup. Gomez in center, Jeanette at second base, Lucroy the catcher, Ramirez back in the lineup, Overbay at first, Chris Davis in left. Good numbers against Bailey. Mark Reynolds in right field. Gene Segura getting his first start since getting whacked in the head by his teammates' bat, Ryan Braun. You'll notice no Braun in the lineup tonight. And Marco Estrada is on the mound. Homer Bailey, 27 years young, out of LaGrange, Texas, set to face Carlos Gomez, and he comes out swinging that ball lined, and what a play! What a play by Billy Hamilton! 
gets it. Holy mackerel, what a play by Hamilton. And now you got to hope that Billy is okay. He landed very hard on that left side. Boy, you're talking about laying out for a ball. This is the definition of that. Full speed, completely outstretched. And somehow he kept that ball in his glove. At first time when I thought he went down, it seemed a possibility that he simply knocked the wind out of himself. But he's waving off the trainers right now. That's the type of stretch and land that a, that a player will hurt his opposite arm rotator cuff because you lay out completely with your head above your body and you stretch those muscles in a way that they're not normally used to being stretched. Now he's holding his wrist, his shoulder, probably barking a little bit. Let's hope he's all right. Well, that was a similar type of attempt, and I say attempt because Skip Schumacher did not catch the ball in Arizona in spring training, but laid out in similar fashion, and that's how he injured his shoulder. Well, that's the way that Jack Hanahan injured his shoulder going after a ball. A lot of players have had shoulder problems with their glove arm because of that, from having dive, dove, dove for a ball, and, and end up on the ground and landing hard. Scooter Jeanette. With a count of two balls and a strike. So what a play right from the get go against the uber aggressive Milwaukee Brewers leadoff hitter Carlos Gomez. Two and one on Jeanette. Three balls and a strike. Homer Bailey two days from now will celebrate his 28th birthday. Now you look at his overall career numbers against Milwaukee and they're not good. In fact they're very bad. Three and seven record. An ERA of almost five and a half, but it should be noted his first two starts against them last year were terrible. He went seven innings, gave up six runs, went five and two thirds, gave up ten hits and four runs. However, his last three starts last year against the Brewers, eight innings, one run, six innings, three runs, seven innings, three runs. So the Reds are hoping that that trend will continue here tonight. They all pitch to Jeanette and we'll do it again. Well, Homer got better as the season went on no doubt and so really that's an old saying of you know what have you done for me lately and against the Brewers where the Brewers have not done well in this ballpark. In fact they have lost 13 of the last 18 games they have played here in Cincinnati. So you just hope that the Reds are catching them at a time when they're about to get going offensively and they put up some good pitching too. Into center field, a base hit, couple of hard hit balls by the Brewers to begin this game. One for an out, and that one a single. Let's take a look at the Reds on defense, presented by your four dealers. The Reds have committed the fewest number of errors among all teams in the league. Ludwig and Bruce flanking Hamilton in center. Frazier and Votto on the corners. Phillips and Cozart up the middle. And Tucker Barnhart gets his first start since being brought up for a second time this year from AAA Louisville. Now Jonathan Lucroy batting in that three hole in the absence of Ryan Braun. 295 batter, a home run, eight runs batted in. Now, this Brewer team is not knocking the cover off the ball. They are winning due to timely hitting. When they've needed a big hit, they've gotten it. And just unbelievable pitching. Team ERA showed you a moment ago at 2.8 on the year. Well, what they've done this year, the Reds have not done, which is win in close ball games. They are six and two in one run games, the Brewers are. So you can say that they're on the lucky side of it, yes, or they're getting key hits when they have to. Jeanette, not a fast runner over at first base. He has taken over the everyday second base job from Ricky Weeks. You wouldn't even know that Weeks is even playing for the Brewers anymore. That's how frequently he's even used off the bench. The struggles offensively for Weeks began a couple of years ago. Carried through all of last year. Jeanette knocked the cover off the ball the final two months of last season. And this could be two. Frazier dropped it. They'll get one. Oh, 
he's thinking too, he's thinking too, and he's probably thinking too, too much before he gets the ball. It happens sometimes where you just try to make that transition too quick and you end up dropping it, but he stayed with it to get it out. You know, that play right there is a is a reason why infielders wear very small gloves because you can reach in there and just not get a grip of it. A smaller glove like most infielders have and Frazier no exception makes it a lot easier to normally get that grip. You know you see see him make that play very often. Now the veteran third baseman Ramos Ramirez. Well they're coming out of their shoes on the first pitch that they see every at bat here against Homer Bailey and for good reason. On the first two pitches of an at bat, Homer Bailey this year is giving up a batting average of around 500. So he's trying to get ahead, but the hitters aren't letting him. Ramirez is hitless in his last 21 at bats. Now he's been bothered after getting hit on the elbow with a couple of pitches. He missed the last two games. That's what made that series in St. Louis so impressive. For the Brewers, they didn't have Braun, they didn't have Segura, they didn't have Aramis Ramirez for two of those games, yet they won the series two games to one. When Ramirez gets a chance, though, with runners in scoring position, he has been deadly. A 500 batter, which leads all National Leaguers. This one in the air to left and playable for Ludwig and that is also a good start to this one after a great play by Hamilton that may have set the tone early on for Homer Bailey. Hamilton is okay. Tomas Vera was here a minute ago. Paul is sorry to make sure that uh, that Billy is okay after that extraordinary catch a moment ago. And it looks like Billy Hamilton is leaving the game. In fact, Chris Heisey just now walks out of the Reds dugout. And my, oh my, you look at the injuries that have hit this Reds team already this year. Well, today with the addition of Tony Singrani on the disabled list because of a sore shoulder, that is the 10th player. And the 11th different trip to the disabled list by a Reds player. Here we are just finishing the first month of the season. I mean, everything that could go wrong from an injury standpoint wrong seems to have gone wrong. And really, Chris, outside of, of one or two of the names that have been on that disabled list, you are talking about integral parts oh. of this Reds team. Whether you're talking about Matt Latos, arguably their ace a season ago. The trio at the end of the game down in the bullpen. Chapman, Broxton, Marshall. Devin Mesoraco, their starting catcher, twice on the disabled list. Now add Singrani to the disabled list. Skip Schumacher, a guy they envision playing all over the place, maybe getting three, four starts a week. And interestingly, the mantra of this ball club really from the beginning of spring training on is you have to stay healthy. So Chris Heisey replacing Billy Hamilton in the Reds lineup. And they're faking Marco Estrada here tonight. Estrada, probably the definition of a late bloomer. 
He's 30 years old, makes his sixth start of the year tonight. Coming off an outstanding game. Of course, he's been nothing but outstanding every start this entire year. Well, when he's healthy, he's pitched pretty good. In fact, you can make an argument that Estrada was the best pitcher the, the Brewers had last year. But he's never really given anybody a full season. The most innings he's ever pitched is 147 innings, and that was in a minor league season. He has four quality starts of his first five on the year, coming off a great outing against the Cubs, and that one is down low, and it's three balls and a strike on Heisey. And what you're going to see out of Estrada is not an overpowering pitcher, guy that tops out anywhere from 88 to 90. A lot of changeups, a lot of curveballs, but he really hits his spots. I think the crowd probably right now wondering where Billy Hamilton is. Why isn't Hamilton leading off? About out of play remains three and two on Heisey. Well, I tell you what, it's a funny game. This was Hamilton still trying to shrug off whatever it was that pains him after making that diving play on the very first pitch of the game. On swinging Heisey, and that's the way it starts in the Reds' first inning. So let's take a look at their batting order. Presented by Meyer. Joey Votto to follow, then Brandon Phillips. Jay Bruce in a cleanup spot. Todd Frazier will bat fifth. Ryan Ludwig in left hit six. In a latter third of Zach Kozart, Tucker Barnhart, and Homer Bailey. But you and I were talking before the game, saying, you know, you wonder the way Heisey has swung the bat. Or maybe the way some of the other guys are not swinging the bat, when would he get a start? And his fate would have it in the lineup after all. Otto drives one into straightaway center field, and that will back up Gomez. He leaps and he got it. How many times is he going to do that to Joey Bono? He got him a year ago, you may remember, and takes away another Votto home run attempt. Yeah, the guy practices that in batting practice. If you had a chance to watch him down here early, he goes, he comes out and practices this. And I mean, he just goes right up there. That is definitely going to be a home run. He's pipping it a little bit. Votto says, come on. How about letting one of those through? Now Brandon Phillips with two down and nobody on. Well, we've seen 255. Yeah, we haven't even played a full inning yet. We've seen two tremendous plays by each team center fielder. Well, if we get any word uh, from Jim Day or anybody in the Reds clubhouse about the condition or what is the injury, the extent of the injury to Billy Hamilton, we will let you know as soon as we know. Estrada originally drafted by the Washington Nationals. He was born in Mexico but grew up in the United States and was drafted out of Long Beach State University. Reached the major leagues in 2008, a little bit of 2009. Then the Brewers picked him up for nothing. Claimed off waivers. On February the 3rd of 2010, and as Chris mentioned, last year, the second half of the year, and the early part of this year, he has been terrific. That one will get by Lyle Overbay, and that'll be a two out single by Brandon Phillips. Well, they had him played exactly perfectly. The ball is going to be hit right at Overbay, and he just. Tries to get down in time. That's how sharply that ball was hit. It went underneath his glove.
See, I didn't drink much of that throw back behind Phillips. But when you look at that replay, that was very close to being an out. Well, it would have been a lot closer to being an out had Overbay taken one more step and gotten in front of the ball. But we don't see that much anymore. Well, now Jay Bruce. Batting average at 220 for Bruce. Three home runs and 14 runs driven in. And that one laced into right field. And that'll advance Brandon Phillips. First to third, so three in a row hard hit balls. Votto, a home run taken away. Phillips a hit, now Bruce a hit. And we'll see if Todd Frazier can do what he did in the first inning last night and deliver a two out, two run base hit. And try to sneak a get ahead fastball right by Jay Bruce. That did not work. He's all over it there. And with two outs, Brandon Phillips has the third base. Guys in the lineup have really had a hard time hitting Marco Estrada. One is Tom Frazier, one is Brian Ludwig, and the other is Chris Heisey. Combined, they are one for 22 against this right hander. So Todd can be a little patient in there, knowing that Estrada is going to try to let Todd get himself out rather than the other way around. Only one to Todd Frazier. Four home runs, 12 runs batted in. He came up, you may remember, in the first inning last night with two away and two on and drove a ball off the left center field wall to drive in a pair of runs. And he pops this one up into short left field. And it is a scoreless opening inning for the Reds. Thanks in large part to Carlos Gomez taking one away once more from Joey Votto. By Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1 800 Elk, Ohio. The most wins before May the 1st. This is all time in the history of baseball. Only the 2003 New York Yankees with 21 wins before May the 1st. Better than the 20 turned in by the Brewers this year. I was Seattle in 01. That's when they. Ripped off what 114 wins that year that Seattle team. Well you know if you're the Brewers you got to ask yourself how do we go from 74 wins to say 94 wins. That's how many the Pittsburgh Pirates had last year. They were in the playoffs as a wild card team. So they've got to at least get 20 games better somehow and the first way you do that is have a good month. They improve themselves they. Have gotten pitching that they didn't have as we've already noted. 
And a strike three called Bailey against Lyle Overbay. First strike out of the game by Homer and Bailey. We'll look inside some of the numbers. We talked about the 20 wins. That's a best record in 28 in all the Major League Baseball. And look at the road numbers. Now, those numbers are going to dramatically tail off. You're not going to win 11 out of every 13 you play. Of course, I'm sure Ron Renicky will tell you, we believe we're better than 9 and 6 every 15 games at home. Well, you know, if you're the Reds, you're thinking, well, you know, we're a few games under 500. We're seven and a half games back, but there's a lot of baseball to be played. And if you're the Brewers, you're saying the same thing. There's a lot of baseball to be played, but we are seven and a half games up on the Reds. Five and a half or so up on the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals picked up a game in that win yesterday over the Brewers as Milwaukee was going for the three game sweep at Bush Stadium. So that really should be the the real goal of this four game series. You'd love a sweep, but you know, those don't rarely they rarely happen. So you're really thinking you really got to win three out of four right here. I went into left field a base hit by Chris Davis and he's a one out base runner second hit of the game by the Brewers against Homer Bailey. They have some sharply hit balls in this game already. Tell you with Chris Davis home run power and then you have Mark Reynolds coming up here now home run power you've got the bottom part of this lineup. That can really juice the baseball. This kid here never gets cheated. Reynolds will swing and miss a lot. We know that. He's led the league a couple of times back in his days playing regularly at third for the Arizona Diamondbacks. But boy, when he runs into one, he might have as much pure power as any player in Major League Baseball. Six two, two 220 pounder played at the University of Virginia. In fact, uh, his teammate while with the Washington Nationals, Ryan Zimmerman was his teammate with the Cloud Cavaliers collegiately. One and oh one Reynolds. And a fastball off the inside corner, two balls and no strikes. Well, from 2008 to 2011, Mark Reynolds did leave the league in strikeouts. Last year he dropped down to eighth. Only had 154 strikeouts, but I think he missed some time to injury. Into left field and that is a base hit on a 2-0 pitch. When you're right about squaring up some pitches early on in this game, you look in the first inning, Gomez, Jeanette. And now here in the second, Davis and Reynolds. Well, look, look where the pitches are. I mean, Tucker Barnhart sitting down and away. He wants that ball down on the knees on the outer part of the plate that floats right back into the center cut. I mean, this is where Homer Bailey is missing right now. I don't know whether his delivery doesn't feel right, his timing is off, his release point isn't there, but he's got to tell himself somehow he's got to start hitting his spots. Because this is way too good of a hitting team to be able to just to fire it up there and hope for the best. Gene Segura back in a starting lineup for the first time since many of you saw the video when he got whacked in the head. While his teammate Ryan Braun was standing a step from the top of the dugout as Braun normally does virtually every day and was swinging his back. And Segura walked in behind him and got nailed. It was ugly. And there's a base hit in the left field. They are going to wave around the runner. The throw is not going to be in time. Three straight hits, and the Milwaukee Brewers have taken a 1 0 lead over Homer Bailey here in the second inning. Uh, three straight hits, sharply hit, three straight hits in the same spot. And the outfield grass here is so thick that it really slows the ball down. So if you're playing a guy and giving him respect, of being able to hit the ball a long way, you're playing them fairly deep. So Ludwig has to come a long way just to get to this ball. I mean, it's rolling by the time he gets to it. He really doesn't have much of a chance of throwing him out. Gene Segura knocking in the run in his first start since last Saturday. That one is bunted foul. 
Well, what a year Segura had last year. I remember he was so impressive the final 44 games of 2012. Last year. Went to the All Star game. Now, watch Segura right there. Of course, you ask yourself the question, and you can say, well, Ryan Braun does it every day, but that's like saying you play with matches every single day. You're standing right there next to the dugout rather than outside of the dugout, and sooner or later, something like that is just bound to happen. That one bunted, and Frazier will throw out the pitcher who advances the runners with a bunt. In fact, Braun made the comment, I'm paraphrasing now, that you know, I'm surprised it hasn't happened before. I mean, Gene Segura is quite lucky that he can even see out of his eye after taking that one to the side of the face. You know, having coached youth league baseball for so many years, oh, that was yeah. always the number one worry. You're right. I always had in every practice and every game that some kid would accidentally swing the bat. And somebody else would run into it. It's funny you say that because I coach my son's not whole team and I am always looking over my shoulder yeah. every single time we come into bat. Scares you to death. Yeah, sure does. And it can happen right here at the big league level. How about that? So now the leadoff man, Carlos Gomez, with runners at second and third, one run in, two are out. Gomez hit that sinking liner. Billy Hamilton made the diving catch on, but Hamilton was injured. What well, is Gomez? This guy is rarely cheated up there at the plate. He is up there to swing that bat. Come right back there in the same spot. They do, and. That one rolled over foul. I mean, if you get a guy who's that aggressive, who sees the ball that well, and he thinks I can hit anything, especially on the inner part of the plate, you just keep moving a little bit more and more inside, and he'll keep hacking at it. If he's looking inside, you give it to him inside, but give it to him about three or four inches farther inside. Reynolds a runner at third, Segura on at second, two are out, and the one two pitch. They come in there, but. Off speed this time, and Gomez doesn't chase. Had to leave in the count of two balls and two strikes. Gomez, of course, had that altercation with Garrett Cole of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he was handed a three game suspension. That was a ball he hit to the outfield, and he was standing there watching it. Gomez said after the game, he wasn't watching it thinking it was a home run, he was watching it thinking it was going to be caught. Wound up being a triple. Jam shot short left and Ludwig makes a play to end the inning. Ludwig getting a good jump on that one. But the Brewers play to run and lead one nothing.
Ohio. Jim Day with you just beside the Reds dugout. And this was a big night for Aroldis Chapman. He returns to the mound in a game situation. Let's go up the road to Dan. He's already thrown an inning. He started the game. And it's just good to see the big fella out there. And he had a good inning as well. Faced three batters. One, two, three innings. Struck out two of them. This batter right here does get a piece of it, but it is a fly out to left. So a scoreless inning with two strikeouts. Stage one of live baseball in the books. Great to see it, boys. Well, you're not lying about that. Good to see a big smile on Aroldis Chapman's face, and it won't be long if all goes well, and he'll be back pitching for the big league club. Well, the speed of his recovery, just amazing. And there are a lot of people that... We're either at that game or saw him shortly thereafter. We're thinking, you know, maybe middle of June for Rolder Chapman. He's got a chance to be back very soon. Ryan Ludwig to lead things off against Marco Estrada here in the red second inning. The Brewers scoring in the top half on a single by Gene Segura. Well, they've just given us word on the injury to Billy Hamilton. So you're going to cut it loose and throw out Ludwig to begin the inning. We're being told that Hamilton has a strained third and fourth knuckle on his left hand. And so hopefully that's something they get ice on it right away. They get to work on it right away. And you'd like to think that wouldn't be too long. Hopefully. You know that really wasn't a big shift here. Here's what happened with Billy Hamilton right here. When he came down. He just landed right on that left hand. Somehow held on to the baseball. That's an amazing play. Well, for all the things it could have been, that's probably about the best news we could have heard. If you start really thinking about shoulder, because I think that's the one thing more than anything mm -hmm. that comes to mind immediately on that kind of a play. Zach Kozar beginning to heat up a little bit. He'll be batting in a seven hole tonight with Tucker Barnhart in the lineup. But Kozar swung the bat very well in the two game series against the Chicago Cubs. Five hits in his last 11 at bats, including a double and a triple. Bottom fell out of that, two and two on Kozar. Opening game of this four game weekend series. Big Star Wars weekend, you know, beginning tomorrow night. And there is strike three called, and Kozai knew it. Two strikeouts in the game now for Estrada, and two outs here in the second. And we've talked about Marco Estrada not being overpowering. His fastball is 88 miles an hour, so deception is everything for him. Look at that front arm of his that glove arm how he flashes it way high into the air and then all of a sudden the, the right arm comes back with the pitch and it's almost like a, a magician uh, trying to distract you from where the baseball's coming not smashed by Barnhart but right at over Bay gets in front of it this time and that's all for the Reds a go in order
Jim Carter in line to win that beautiful new Tundra if a red hits the Toyota sign out in right center field tonight. Going by Jim now rather than Jimmy. And Jim is living over in Taylor Mill, Kentucky. You can register for your chance to win by stopping over at your Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer. And we invite you to hang around coming up later on tonight and every night here on Fox Sports Ohio. We will have our Miller Time moment. Scooter Jeanette to lead things off for the Brewers against Homer Bailey. He had a base hit into center field back in the first inning. One run, four hits already for Milwaukee. Three came consecutively with one out producing the game's only run in the second. 2-0 to Jeanette. He'll be followed by Lucroy and Aramis Ramirez. Three balls in a strike. Well, Scooter Jeanette, born in Cincinnati, raised in Sarasota. And he has even a little bit more connection to Cincinnati. He played one summer for the, the Midland Redskins. A lot of exposure as an amateur player playing for that organization. Just one of those guys that for years and years people kept telling him he was too small. He's only 5'10, 170. Wasn't fast enough, wasn't strong enough, didn't have a good enough arm. And here he is hitting 300 in the big leagues. Three and two on Jeanette. Popped up to the left side of the infield, and that's easy for Zach Cozart. That's all for Jeanette. One gone here in the third. <laughs> now, Jonathan Lucroy, what a rock solid player this guy has become. We recall when he first came to the major leagues, they were using him in a backup role. I mean, heck, when he first came up, that's when they still had Jason Kendall as their primary catcher. But as time has moved forward, Luke Roy has turned in to one of the more productive offensive catchers in all of Major League Baseball. Frazier, a nice play and safe as a call at first. I don't think that throw pulled Joey Votto off the bag at all. I think that Luke Roy, who runs pretty well for a catcher, simply outran the play. Swings hard and hit very slowly down the line. And it's going to stay fair. So Frazier's got no, no other choice but to try to make a play. Now, had the throw been chest high, it would have been enabled Joey Votto to stretch out towards the third base bag and probably had him by an eyelash. That goes a base hit. Luke Roy a season ago hit 280. He knocked in 82 runs for this Brewers team. Hit 18 home runs, had nearly 30 doubles. And maybe it shouldn't come as a surprise that he was able to leg out an infield hit. When's the last time you heard of a catcher collect six triples in a season? That's what Luke Roy did last year. Well, he's trying to push the running game this year. He's attempted to steal four times and he's been thrown out three. Well, he had nine stolen bases last year. So obviously not going at quite the rate this year as he did last year. Got a pretty good lead though. Yeah. 
One ball and one strike. The count on Aramis Ramirez. He ended the opening inning, stranding Gannett at second base with a fly ball to left field. Ramirez has always been among the best run producers at third base over the last really decade and a half. I missed a lot of time due to injury last year only played in 92 games. Well, you know you look through his career going back to when he first came up with the Pirates. He's had years of 112 103 92 119 101 111 93 105. That's a number of RBIs through many many years for Aramis Ramirez. So he puts together a couple of more seasons. Now I don't know if he would gather very many votes for the Hall of Fame. But he will have numbers that will be very very similar to guys that are in the Hall of Fame as third baseman. Career 285 batter. Closing in on 360 career home runs. Almost 1300 runs batted in. That's a lot of production. I don't know that those numbers are intriguing, but I'm not so sure it's an easy call but putting them in the that, hall. That's why I brought it up. I'm not so sure if you would. But at the end of the day, as Bailey handles a comebacker, Phillips able to turn it after gathering his footing. Well, hit nobody left, middle of the third. Reds trail by a run. with the Homer pick six plan presented by McDonald's. Now if you buy today you pick five additional games of your choice and you save huge money. It's only available until Sunday to guarantee your Homer Bailey bobblehead dual bobblehead 765 7500 or visit reds.com slash pick six. Marco Estrada had his team punch across a run against Homer Bailey. Singles by Davis Reynolds RBI single by Segura in the second inning. So here we go in the last of the third and it's one nothing Milwaukee in front. So Homer Bailey to lead things off. Be followed by Chris Heisey replacing the injured Billy Hamilton. 
And then Joey Votto and Estrada starts him out with a strike. Homer three hits and ten at bats. He has a run batted in. Pulled foul. Sounded like he broke his bat. He's going to take a look at it. And apparently it's all right. And he's gone on three pitches. Now they throw the fastball that time right by Homer Bailey, but Estrada, for the most part, is not a fastball pitcher. He gets his outs on the off speed stuff. And there's the deception that we're talking about. He really shows the hitter all glove, and then all of a sudden that comes through, and there's the baseball. Now that baseball behind him was, uh, there was this was taken during his warm ups between innings. But you can see why a hitter would get kind of jittery up there. You see that glove flash and then you jump at it a little bit and he throws it up there at 77 miles an hour and gets you way out in front. Two on Heisey. So really, when you're facing a guy like Estrada, what you have to think when you get to the plate is not think fastball and react to the breaking ball, but you think about trying to hit the breaking ball and then react to the fastball because you're going to get more off-speed pitches than you are fastballs. Heisey fouls it away off to the first base side. It remains no balls and two strikes. Reds had back to back hits in the opening inning from Phyllis and Bruce after the first two were retired. Of course, one of those retired was Joey Votto when Carlos Gomez went up and over the wall to take away a home run. Votto waits. And that's strike three. This was last year, a chance to win the game when Gomez took the home run away from Votto. Almost an identical play here tonight. Two away from Votto. And a fastball misses inside. Two balls and no strikes. That was a reaction by Votto. After Gomez went over the wall in the opening inning. Not a tough chance here for Jeanette on the roller to the right side. And the Reds are retired. One, two, three. That's seven straight retired by Estrada. One nothing Milwaukee in front.
The outfielder whose versatility is making him a valuable asset to the Reds. You can chat with Al McCoy and relive the Blue Jackets historic season with a recap of our final ringside chat. It's all brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto Drive Safe. Spend less. Alongside Chris Wells, Jim Day, our entire Fox Sports Ohio crew, delighted to have you with us on this Thursday night. Red splitting the first two games of his homestand after they were rained out on Monday. So the Cubs are out, the Brewers are in, and Overbay on the first pitch, a roller at Brandon Phillips, one away. Well, Lyle Overbay, for whatever reason, he's always been a good hitter. He has been an extraordinary hitter in this ballpark. Career batting average of 370, and that's in well over 100 plate appearances in his second go round with the Brewers. In fact, only Xavier Nady has a better batting average in this ballpark by a visiting player with over 100 plate appearances than Lyle Oberbay. Now, Chris Davis, he had a one out single. And scored the game's only run on the base hit by Segura in the second inning. Brewers have the one run on five hits. They've left three. The Reds have two hits. They've left two. And the Reds playing a big defensive shift on this right-handed batting Milwaukee left fielder. Well, they feel that he's even going to pull a 95-mile-an-hour fastball, but he just loves to jump on that heater. Pitch right there. One thing for certain, you're either going to have him put the ball in play or strike him out because he's not likely to walk. He has walked one time and he has struck out 32 times. Chris Davis has. So he's up there to hack. And that one walk, the fewest by any single player in the National League who is playing regularly. And he's gone swinging, and Barn Hart will make a good firm throw down to Votto. And for Homer Bailey, that's his second strikeout of the night. Two away here in the fourth inning. But how do you pitch a Chris Davis? Well, excellent job, and we'll take a look at it by Homer Bailey and his Mazda pitch by pitch. Fastball inside really sets up everything right there, and even 1 1 count. And then from then on, just throw either the breaking ball or the splitter. Those look like low fastballs coming out of his hand. They were not, they were down in the dirt. Davis goes down swinging in our Mazda pitch by pitch. Now Mark Reynolds he had a single in the left field behind the base hit by Davis this time it's on the ground at Kozar that's a quick one two three inning for Homer Bailey. So the Reds have Phillips Bruce and Frazier coming up down a run. Brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. Buy Toyota for over 30 Toyota offers. Visit buyatoyota.com. 
And my enjoy boneless Thursdays at B-Dubs with specially priced boneless wings all day. What a steal. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Hall of Famer Marty Bredeman has a night off tonight. Uh, he might be hanging out over at B-Dubs having some of those wings. He might be, but he'll make sure he's in front of that TV. I can guarantee him. Dialed into Reds baseball. Of course, trying to get through that stress fracture in his foot. You know, he told me when we were in Chicago that he thought he had a stress fracture. I said, no, no, no. No, you probably just have a little sprain. But you can do the little, the ting test. You know, where you ping it or you ting it with it, you flip your little finger at it, and if it vibrates and hurts, then you've got a broken bone. I wonder if that's what uh, Dr. Kremchek did to diagnose that. May have done it. Beast, he's in a big boot, huh? Yes, he is. And he'll have the weekend off to try and heal up, and after the Monday morning, the team will board the plane for a very brief two game stop at Fenway Park Tuesday and Wednesday nights of next week, and then right back home. Another homestand opening up against Colorado and San Diego. Ah, but first things first. Brewers in town for the first of four. And the Reds trail here in game one. One nothing. Brandon Phillips hit one by the first baseman. Right where he's standing right now. And that is the first baseman basically playing where the second baseman would normally play. Well, there were some sharply hit balls off of each pitcher in the first inning. But ever since that time, Marco Estrada has really settled down. He's retired seven in a row now. Estrada's fan four. He has not walked a batter in the game tonight. He's only walked six batters all year. Two and two on Brandon Phillips. Segura and what a play by the Milwaukee shortstop. Well, what a play by the Milwaukee defensive alignment coordinator because this is the second time in this ball game that they robbed the Reds of a base hit by pitching that shortstop over by third. They did it against Ryan Ludwig this time a real whale of a play by Segura shows you his athleticism. But I mean he doesn't get to that ball unless you put it on a little semi shift. And now they're going to do a full blown shift against Jay Bruce. Jay had a single to right field his first time up and hits one right at the position where Obra Bay is standing, and that's quickly two away here in the Reds' fourth inning. Well, when you shift the right side of the infield like that, you bring your shortstop over to the right side of second base, you can afford to have your first baseman almost right on the line. And that's exactly where Obra Bay was. So. Somebody's reading those defensive charts, right? Those hitting charts, right? He'll go right down the line here. Frazier stranded a pair of runners in the opening inning with a fly ball to left field and looks at a first pitch fastball strike one here. Might be the only fastball he gets in this at bat. Eleven first pitch strikes through the front 14 batters that have come to the plate tonight against Marco Estrada. Into center field. And that's a two out single for Frazier. Well, you can catch Fox Sports Ohio's coverage of Reds baseball all year long with MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service celebrating 12 years. Visit Reds.com for more details. I know you're dialed in on that, Mr. Welsh. You're able to watch games all the time on your computer or your telephone or whatever it is you might be doing. iPad, laptop, you name it. Right out on the end of the bat, this ball, our, our box phantom cam, 5,000 frames per second. 
He'll sacrifice a broken bat for a base hit all day, every day. Ludwig bounces out to the shortstop. That was leading off the red second inning. And they're playing him in the same spot. They got Segura pitched way around on the left side. I mean, the whole center part of the infield is wide open for Ryan Ludwig if he can stay long enough on a baseball to drive it back up through the middle. That's a hard thing to do against a guy that throws that off speed pitch so slow like Estrada. There goes Frazier. Got a good jump and easily steals second base. So the Reds continue to be very aggressive running the bases for Todd Frazier. That is his third of the year. I mean, why wouldn't you? And the way that Estrada's throwing the baseball, it's a lot easier to get a hit, a stolen base, and another base hit than try to wait back and get three hits in an inning. Reds lead the National League in stolen bases this year. The last time they did that, you have to go all the way back to 1997. Nine times through the history of Reds baseball, they've had a team lead the league in that category. And I think most people are surprised, not those necessarily that were old enough to remember the days of the Big Red Machine, but when you hear about the Big Red Machine, it makes you think about this lineup loaded with sluggers. Well, they had plenty of those. But in both 1975 and 1976, the Reds led the National League in stolen bases. Joe Morgan, of course, a huge part of that, along with Ken Griffey Jr. Senior, I beg your pardon. Two and one on Ryan Ludwig. But they had other guys who would chip in with double digits in stolen bases. The Rose would do that. Geronimo would do it. Concepcion ran well. Didn't run as well after he broke his ankle very early in his career, but still well enough to get you a bag every now and again. Three balls in a strike. Ludwig and that is ball four. Well, right now you can tweet your photo using hashtag Ohio fan photo and have a chance to have it shown during an upcoming telecast. It's brought to you by a TNT. First pitch swinging is Cozart on a little tapper down to third, and that'll end the inning. Red Strand two for the second time in a game and trailed by a run.
And it's brought to you by Ray St. Clair Roofie. You always get the first look at the lineups. You'll hear from the clubhouse and so much more. It's Reds Live, the pregame edition. Jim Day with you, and the boys talked about it earlier. Reds made a move today. Tony Singrani to the disabled list, and he was not happy before the game. Um, I know why they do a lot of things, but I mean, I, I don't, I don't agree with it. But I mean, that's what they want to do because they don't want me to, you know, injure myself. So I mean, I understand. Um, I mean, I think I keep throwing and be fine, but you know, they, they're, you know, exercising caution. So. He did not want to come out of last night's game, but Brian Price said that his velocity was down. He was pitching his fastball probably about around 88 consistently last night. And they just think that it's time. This is a good time to sit him down because the Reds do not need a fifth starter until the 17th with some off days coming up. They can sit him down and not need five in a row starters until that 17th day. So slight shoulder tendonitis and hopefully they'll come down a little bit boys. Yeah, the Reds have three off days in the next 10 days after they get through this game here tonight. They have two of them next week with that Boston two game series sandwiched in between days off Monday and Thursday. So Sengrani on the disabled list and Curtis Parch brought back up from Triple A Louisville. Got to love the attitude though of Tony Sengrani, don't you? I mean, hey, I didn't want to go on the DL. He probably still hurting, but still wanted to stay on the roster, able to pitch. Not one of these guys is a well. Let's 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 take the cautionary route here to make sure that I'm completely healed before I get back. The guy wants to play, and he may not like what the Reds did, but I like that attitude. Two and two, the count on Gene Segura knocked in the game's only run with a single in the left field. In the second inning, and he has gone on strikes this time, and that's three of them in the game for Homer Bailey. Right, a little deeper into the ball game now. Homer Bailey has a little better release point on that breaking ball. We'll take a look at this one. We'll make it our flamethrower of the night. Brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce, that little splitter for a strikeout. 85 miles an hour, about 10 miles less than what his fastball is, but we'll put a little hot sauce on it. One and one on Estrada. He put down a sacrifice his first time up. Bailey allowed the run. Four hits through the first two innings. He has only allowed an infield single by Lucroy over the last two and a third frames. Two and one on Estrada. Weak fly ball in the short right field and Jay Bruce on to get it for out number two. Come on down to the Holy Grail tomorrow night before the Reds and the Brewers. You might answer our Reds trivia questions and win great prizes and might even be featured on Reds Live. Join in on the fun tomorrow night at six o'clock at the Holy Grail on the banks. Two down nobody on we're in the top of the fifth inning at Great American Ballpark. On a chilly spring night, a lot of folks in the stands you'll see wearing heavy jackets here tonight. Supposed to warm up again beginning tomorrow and right on through the weekend. Temperatures in the 70s, Saturday and Sunday, but tonight a little bit chilly. That young lady came prepared, hat and all. Carlos Gomez fouls it back out of play, a ball and a strike. Look at that fellow. He might look like he's prepared, meaning he's got the jacket, but he doesn't look like he's prepared. Or he's thinking about that heavy jacket that he left at home. Yeah, or out in the parking lot. That's the way you looked when the Reds kicked off the Reds winter caravan this year. Somewhere around Athens, Ohio. <laughs> now that young man. Oof. 
two and two on Carlos Gomez. Three balls and two strikes to the Milwaukee center fielder. Gomez signed a three year contract extension during spring training this year. He's coming off his best major league season. Hit 24 home runs, knocked in 73, stole 40 bases. And he was named the Brewers' most valuable player, led the team in doubles, home runs, extra base hits, total bases, slugging percentage. Still very young, 28. Signed originally by the New York Mets and was traded to Minnesota. That was in the Johan Santana deal. And they thought Gomez in Minnesota was going to be their guy for a long time to come, but he struck out a lot. They finally traded him for J.J. Hardy to Milwaukee. And he has drawn a two-out walk. And you're talking about a guy who is nearly impossible to walk. But it was only two years ago when Carlos Gomez hit 225. And that was the year they had Niger Morgan sharing time out in center field with Gomez. And, and Morgan was the better player that year. He had 260 to Gomez, but struck out 100 times again. Had a little bit more power, and they figured, well, we're going to make him the every gay guy in 2013 and see what happens. Well, they found themselves an all-star player for that year anyway. Now, Jeanette. Well, he's having a tremendous year this year, leading the league in total bases overall. Gomez has four steals in five attempts, has a good lead over there, held on by Votto. Jeanette is singled and popped up to short. And he lifts this in the air at Ryan Ludwig, and that's it for the Brewers in the fifth. So a two-out walk, and that's it. Barnhart, Bailey, Heisey coming up. Reds down a run. Right, a telecast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. The game's only run is single delivered by Gene Segura. Chris Davis beating the throw from Ryan Ludwig in left field. One nothing Brewers as the Reds bat here in the last of the fifth inning against Marco Estrada. 
Tucker Barnard bounced out to the first baseman his first time up. Homer Bailey to follow, and then Chris Heisey. But it's only half three hits in the game. Singles by Phillips and Bruce with two out in the first inning. Estrada wiggled off the hook, getting Frazier to hit a fly ball to Davis in left field. And then two out noise in the fourth on a single by Frazier. A walk to Ludwig. That's the only walk of the game by Estrada. And he got Kozart to chase the first pitch and rolled one down to Aramis Ramirez. High fly ball, right field. Is this home run number one? It is in the career of Tucker Barnhart. Likeable young man you will ever come across in a baseball uniform. I think he may have surprised himself with how far that ball went. It was a changeup. He just went out to get that bad boy and parked it right into the Brewer bullpen. Way to go, Tucker Barnhart. Well, Tucker Barnhart had the same number of home runs in his minor league career as Billy Hamilton, 13. So here in 2014 this will be a year no matter what happens the rest of the way that young Mr. Tucker Barnhart will never forget. Got his first major league base hit when the team was in New York this season and now his first big league home run. Jim Day. Well guys I talked to Tucker Barnhart when he came back up and he said you know what I feel like a completely different person coming back this this time and Chris Welsh might be able to relate to this. Is that the first time he came up he was just like a deer in headlights trying to just take it all in and get used to the speed of play. He said he got his first hit out of the way got his first start out of the way and this time he's just coming back ready for business and business just paid off. Oh, good for him. Pride of Brownsburg, Indiana. Now there's a changeup coming. And he swung at the one, the pitch before. Did not look good at it. It was down in the dirt that time. Estrada got it up a little bit. And Tucker Barnhart gets his first major league home run. You know, that, that's a good point that Jim Day made in his conversation with Tucker Barnhart. The first time you're up here, you know, you think you're the one that's in the spotlight. And the second time you're up, you realize, you know what? We're up here for a reason. You need to contribute. You just get out there and play every day. Man, that's got to feel good. Oh, yeah. Good for him. So a 1 1 game, and here's a 3 2 to Heise, and that is ball four. Second one of those issued tonight by Estrada. All right, now, Chris, we saw Todd Frazier steal the base against his combination back in the fourth inning. Do you suspect the Reds are going to stay aggressive against the combo of Estrada and Luke Roy? Well, no, I don't think you really want to do that right now, unless Chris Heise really feels that. You know, you put the math together, and they that they don't get the ball to the to the catcher, and then the second base in as much time as you can get there. But with Bono up, I think you don't want to take a chance of maybe him running into one. You want you don't want to run yourself out of an inning with your main guy at the plate. He doesn't hit very many ground ball double plays. I think you let him rip it, and you stay at first base. One and oh, the count on bottom. On the outside corner, borderline strike, and it's one and one. Bato had the home run taken away on the drive to center field in the opening inning. Carlos Gomez leaping up and over the wall to bring it back. And then Estrada got Vado on a roller to the second baseman, Jeanette. 
who threw him out in the third. Votto, four home runs, ten runs batted in, has five doubles so far on the year. And that's a go ahead run. Heisey over there at first base. Looked like Estrada lost his footing. And it's three and one to Joey Votto. We've seen Joe in situations where he's got a hitter's count going, but he doesn't necessarily get ultra aggressive. He's looking for one pitch in one spot. Runner goes, and it's taking ball four. So here you have Estrada, who had walked. Only one batter through the front four, and that came in the fourth inning. It was just his seventh walk of the entire year. And now, after giving up the home run to Tucker Barnhart to tie the game leading off the inning, he fans Bailey, then walks Heisey and Votto consecutively. Well, as hard as Joey Votto hit that ball in the first inning that was brought back by Carlos Gomez, I think that was one reason when. Marco Estrada got down to him in the count. He didn't give him anything close at that point. The fastball missed, a couple of bounce change ups, hoping Votto would chase it. He didn't want anything to do with Votto right there. I think he really would rather have faced Brandon Phillips with two guys on than Joey Votto with one man on. Brandon Phillips a single in the right field in the first inning had a hit taken away deep in a hole at short on a nice play by Segura in the fourth. So Brandon made good contact in each of his first two plate appearances here tonight. Base hit right now could give the Reds a lead. Ball one. It almost seems like the last four or five pitches that Estrada has thrown, he's pitching not to make a mistake rather than being aggressive and going after the hitter. This is where Brandon can make him throw a strike here. Heisey takes off for third and no throw. So the Reds clearly have made that decision that when they feel the time is right. They will continue this very, very aggressive early season base running. Well, I think the time was right because you see where the second baseman is at here. He's really nowhere near second base to hold Heisey on. Heisey senses that, gets a big jump. So you're running on the defense, really rather running on the catcher. Meanwhile, 2 0 on Brandon Phillips with runners at first and third with only one away in the inning. Reds looking for their first lead of the night. They've tied it on the Barnhart home run here in the fifth. Beat him with a fastball there at 2 0. That pitch a little bit higher than Brandon really likes him. Still playing a semi shift on him. They've got the second baseman over near second. The shortstop way over near the third base back. They're thinking that Brandon Phillips is going to roll over on one here. Two now to Phillips. Two on, one out. And it's on the ground down to third. This should be two, and it is two in the inning. Boy, oh boy. But the Reds tie it up on the home run, the first in the career of Tucker Barnard. They're celebrating in the Hoosier State tonight.
Montgomery. First play of the game, Billy Hamilton, a diving catch in left center field, ends up injuring a pair of knuckles and had to leave the game. Bottom of the first inning, Gomez says, take that, Joey Votto. After doing the same thing to him last year, Segura, a base hit into left field, played in Chris Davis, 1-0 Milwaukee in the second. And then Tucker Barnard, just a moment ago, his first major league home run, tying the game at one, and that's where we stand as we're off to the sixth inning. Part of the order against Homer Bailey, who has only allowed one hit. That was an infield hit over the last three innings, and only two base runners. Carlos Gomez drew a two out walk in the fifth. 70 pitches in the game for Bailey, far more efficient than he has been in really every start, including the by far the best start he has had, the only good start he has had. That would have been the game in Chicago where he shut out the Cubs for six innings, but he was closing in on 100 pitches through six, and they had to get him out of that one. Brought up earlier how Bailey has struggled and struggled mightily against these Milwaukee Brewers through the years until his final three starts against Milwaukee last year. And he was rock solid in all three. One and two on Luke Roy. Now this year for Homer Bailey, he seems to be digging his own hole, and it happens early in the, the inning. In fact, with leading off an inning, the on-base percentage against Homer Bailey this year is close to 500. It's 481. So he's been pitching out of the stretch a lot more than he's been pitching out of the full windup. He's reversed that trend tonight. In the air, Votto over near the stands. Will he have room? He gave it a go and two rows into the seats. Back tonight, Homer Bailey has retired the first batter in every inning he's pitched. This one is playable in short right center. Jay Bruce the running grab, and that's the way we start things here in the sixth inning. Big Star Wars weekend, fun and excitement beginning tomorrow night. Running through Sunday here at the ballpark. Now on Sunday, we're giving away the Star Wars poster to the first 20,000 fans through the gates. We've got the fireworks show here tomorrow night. Other Star Wars giveaways tomorrow and Saturday. Call 513-381-REDS, visit select Kroger locations, or log on to Reds.com. Another fly ball out near Jay Bruce. This time off the bat of Aramis Ramirez, and two are out here in the sixth inning. That'll bring Lyle Overbay to the plate. You know, we talked about Overbay in his second go round with the Milwaukee Brewers. He still holds the franchise record for doubles in a single season. He had a whopping 53 of them back in that 2004 year. Overbay's never been a guy that, you know, possesses a lot of thunder in that bat, but. Early in his career, he was an outstanding hitter. Gap to gap. He'd been around a long time, originally coming up with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And as soon as you say not a lot of thunder, he drives Ludwig to the wall, and that's where he makes a catch to end the inning. So Bailey sets down the side in order. Bruce Frazier, Ludwig coming up. We're in a 1 1 game after five and a half.
set to lead things off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. NRIGS bringing the energy. Career home runs at Great American Ballpark. Adam Dunn, number one, 126. And Jay Bruce with his next will reach triple digits. How about that? Be a good time for it right here. Be a real good time for it right here. Bruce Frazier Ludwig against Marco Estrada. Both of these teams have pitched very, very well through the first month of this season. And both of these starters are pitching very well here tonight. One run, five hits for Milwaukee. One run, four hits for the Reds. And Bruce looks at a pitch down low. He is single to right and bounced out to over Bay at first. Bruce's first two times up swung at the first pitch. Each of the first two. And now takes as many pitches and this at bat as he has seen in his prior two combined. Get a look at Jim Day down there. Right behind Todd Frazier. And there's a four pitch walk to begin the inning. We got, we got to get Jim Day a, a chair down there, like a big high stool. I mean, he is standing down there for all nine innings. Well, I don't know if he stands down there all nine innings. You know, he's no longer tethered by a cord. So if he's got that, you know, remote microphone, he can go anywhere in the ballpark and go out there and be with his people most of the time, which I know he loves more than anything. Tell you what, though, I brought it up the other night. We have those uh, those rainy games here. You got to find him some of that that outdoor gear. They have, they have ponchos here, don't they? I mean, I'm talking I'm talking big league stuff. You, mean like, I mean, you know, he's down there all the time. Like like you see on the on the Weather Channel or something like that. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Well. If he's in the press box, so he would have no need to wear it. Well, that's right. But every night, every night now, he's down there. But he got soaked the last couple of days of this homestand. That's up and in one ball and one strike on Frazier. Bruce a perfect five out of five in stolen base attempts so far this year. And make no mistake, Estrada's going to pay attention to him. We have the opportunity to visit with Eric Davis frequently during spring training. And for the last number of years, he has, he has said there is no reason why the Reds are not stealing more bases than they were stealing. And he always used to use Jay Bruce as an example. There's a fly ball. Into left center field. Pretty well hit. And that ball is gone. A home run by Frazier. to the plate and Frazier's got great plate coverage gets his arm extended out there that ball right into the first row gives Reds a little bit of lead and Matt Lato's joining in the celebration good to see the big guy around how many times have we seen Frazier do this basically with one arm yeah his one hand his right hand is almost completely off the bat Frazier is just unbelievably strong. Yeah. Check in downstairs with the aforementioned Jim Day. Well, guys, uh, this is not exactly calling your shot, but it is close. Todd Frazier, when a pitcher's warming up in the first inning, will sneak down here to the camera well, and he will look at the pitcher's delivery. And he said to me tonight, 
This guy throws spaghetti and meatballs, and I'm hungry for a meatball. He's going to throw me a meatball, and at some point in this game, I'm going to eat. Well, he just ate. Well, I think what he means by a meatball is a pitch that was hittable and up and over the plate. And you got to be ready for it. And it's funny, the Frazier, you know, we, we've seen that same swing where he'll seemingly hit the ball on the end of the bat and it goes to the warning track. The difference for Frazier between the ball getting out of the ballpark is simply a couple of inches where he gets it on the sweet spot. And a mistake by Estrada. And he doesn't give up too many. That's only the second and third home runs he's given up this year. Isn't it? Strada giving up five coming oh, into the game. Just read the stat sheet there. So they hit him and they give him up. One and two to count on Zach Kozai, who is struck out looking and bounced out to third base. And a high tapper. Ramirez of Perilet the throw, not going to be in time. Infield hit by Koza. Now these are the kind of things that don't happen when you're really mired in a slump and not going good at all. When you're going good, you're able to beat this play out. He's got a ways to go, Kozart does, but he's coming around a little bit more, getting a few breaks, seeing him smile a little bit more, seeing him out of first base a whole lot more. Talked about Kozart. He's our steel power tool performer. And certainly Kozart and the Reds. And the Reds fans are hoping this young man is, is starting to swing the bat. They remember he got off to the terrible start the first two months of last year. And then hit almost 290 over the final three months of the season. So they're hoping he can begin to kick it in to gear here in the second month. Send out some birthday wishes to Ricky Rowland, who turned 18 years old, a senior at St. X High School, graduating in a month or so, and heading off to be an Irish at Notre Dame. So he made the year. final decision, did yeah. Ricky? Yeah. He is a good young man. We That's wish him nothing but the very, very best. Pretty good, uh, pretty good week to be able to decide where you're going to school, go to Notre Dame, and be 18. He was flirting around with USC, yes, Southern California. Along with Notre Dame. I might as well look at the arch rival, right? Why not? I'll tell you, it's always a mark of a, a quality young person on many levels, but you see the way they treat real little kids. And Ricky's had a chance to be around my kids a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I mean, just treats them like a million bucks. Oh, Luke was wearing him out. Well, he will again. <laughs> You don't realize how old 17 is until you try to keep up with it. But how old is eight he? or nine? Eight or nine year old. Running him into the ground. Anything I feel, I'm 50. <laughs> well, you started out tired. <laughs> to, add to the count on Barnard. In his first major league home run is last time up. And now three and two. Reds lead three to one after the home run by Frazier. See if Kozar gets started 3 2 pitch. He will. And a bouncer right back to the mound. The only play for Estrada at first. Two out. Bailey coming up. Well, if you don't know by now, it is a full weekend of Star Wars beginning tomorrow night and running through Sunday at Great American Ballpark. Big fireworks show tomorrow night featuring a Star Wars theme. 
presented by Frisch's Big Boy. 3-8-1 RDS or visit select Kroger locations. Or you can always log on to Reds.com. So now Bailey taking a look around the Milwaukee defense. Been a rather odd couple of innings here for Estrada. Primarily his inability to throw strikes. Did not walk a batter through the front three. He has walked four batters in the last three. We mentioned earlier he had only walked six batters in his first 31 plus innings coming into the game. One and two on Homer Bailey. Now the two walks that came consecutively in the fifth inning didn't come back to bite him. He got the double play ball off the bat of Brandon Phillips. No, but they came after that home run that Tucker Barnhart hit. Sometimes that can upset a pitcher a little bit. You don't think he hit the ball that good, and all of a sudden you see it disappear over the fence, and you think you have to be extra fine. Well, Todd Frazier snaps. The 1 1 tie after a leadoff walk to Jay Bruce. He plays long ball 3 1. Reds in front. Seen great defense indeed by both sides so far here tonight. On our way to the seventh inning, and you know, Chris, this game now squarely on the shoulders of one Homer Bailey. Well, he's thrown the ball very well early on, Tom. You weren't really so sure about that because they came out swinging the bats very hard. They hit the ball hard in the first couple of innings, but he's really settled down. He's found better release point with his fastball. He's mixed in some really good breaking balls, especially the split finger that he's used. Giving up only one run, one walk. And I think he's working quite well with Tucker Barnhart. That may be something that'll have an effect, or a positive effect on Homer Bailey tonight. I mean, because what we've seen out of Tucker Barnhart. All the scouting report that we had heard about him being a good receiver. I mean, it's been exactly right on. He is exactly that. Puts a pitcher at ease. 
Gets real small behind the plate. Gives an umpire a good view of the strike zone. Doing a good job. Well, this is clearly a game you are leaning heavily upon Homer Bailey to be able to finish the deal. Not necessarily finish the game. We'll see about that. But his team has now staked him to a 3-1 to one lead. And whether it's Bailey along with some help from the bullpen or just Bailey all on his own opening game of a three game series you're already four game series you're already seven and a half behind this team in your division. They're playing without one of their big stars arguably their best player and Ryan Braun. I mean this is where you nail down a win. He wants to know where this one was and it was a little bit inside he thought it was a strike. But you're right and if you're Homer Bailey and you want the win you want to turn it over to the closer. Nobody before him. Mm -hmm. Got one win of the five starts he's had. He's only had one quality start of all those starts that he's been out there. Long ball very well tonight against a hot team. On the ground, and they had Phillips positioned perfectly to throw out Davis. Well, gone are the days when a fielder will make a play like that and the batter will look up and say, Well, what are you doing there? Because now you see this type of shift more and more often. I mean, there is just so much data out there that ball clubs can evaluate. You know, those old fashioned charts of where somebody would take a magic marker in different colors and then put a line where a batter hits them and estimate that the guy's a pull hitter or not, those are done. On the ground by Reynolds and just like that Bailey takes care of the first two here in the seventh. A couple of really easy innings there are six pitches in the fourth eight pitches in the sixth. His way to another ultra efficient inning here. Well, now Segura, and that's just off the inside corner. He knocked in the only Milwaukee run that came back in the second inning after singles in front of him by Davis and Reynolds. Segura hit one hard in the left field, bringing in Davis, but Bailey has been sensational ever since that base hit. That came with one out in the second inning. Homer has only allowed one hit since then over the last four and two thirds frames, and that was an infield hit by LaCroix in the third. Two and one. And the Brewers have had just one additional base runner to that infield hit when Bailey walked Carlos Gomez on a 3 2 pitch in the fifth. It's off the outside corner three and one now on Segura. They have Ricky Week standing in the on deck circle. Week's former number one pick for many years their regular second baseman no longer. Three one offering to Segura. And that one shot into right field a base hit man that kid's a good looking hitter. Off to a slow start this year. But two hits and three at bats tonight. Yeah, he's got a high ceiling, and here he is batting in the number eight spot. A kid that I think most council will agree that he hasn't reached his potential offensively at all. But defensively, they rank him as one of the top three or four shortstops in the league. So now Weeks announced as a pinch hitter. He's appeared in 19 games, but only six of them as a starter. Weeks last year saw that batting average drop all the way down to 209. Lost his job. He knocked in 24 runs in over 100 games. Spent a lot of time on the disabled list. He ruptured a, a tendon in his hamstring in early August. 
Well, one of the Brewers you... people talk about what a great kid he is and that he's not made any waves, not made any noise, not causing any problems despite losing his job. Well, the one thing you do know about Ricky Weeks is that he can hit a fastball. And that's why the UC against Homer Bailey, Homer's going to hopefully give him more of a diet of breaking balls like he had Weeks packing out on that first pitch. He's done well against Weeks' lifetime. Off Chip Bailey's Burner. foot, and no play. That'll be a base hit for Ricky Weeks. And now all of a sudden, some trouble of brewing here. As Milwaukee has Gomez coming up. Out after that, put a glove on that foot. That's if he get out of the inning. Yeah. Well, Bailey cruising along through the first two batters in the inning, and that one a liner into left center field, and this is trouble. Brewers are going to tie the game on a double by Carlos Gomez. Just like that single single double on the first pitch by Gomez and we are tied at three here in the seventh inning uh, the same old song for Homer in as much as the first pitch of the at bat that pitch our Fox track shows to be off the plate actually but you know how much Gomez likes the ball inside and I'm not so sure that he, that Homer even wanted to catch that much of the plate and he got the bat head through, and he has hit the ball hard twice against Homer Bailey. No bigger one than that. You know what's amazing about Bailey? I mean, this guy has been given a number of leads so far this year. When Bailey is in the game and the Reds have the lead while he is in the game, Opponents are batting 429 against Homer Bailey. 11 of the 21 runs that he has allowed have come while his team has given him a lead in a game. Yeah, I'm not really sure that affects the way a pitcher pitches the ball game, but it's certainly indicative of the fact that he's certainly not on the game, at least the way they thought that he would be. Overall, his batting average against is 345. So. You know the old saying is, "Hey, we give this guy a lead, and he doesn't give it up." Homer's not there right now. Well, the three-one lead, the Reds just took on the home run by Frazier is gone, and now you're just trying to keep it at a tie game. You've got Jeanette who looks at a breaking ball in the dirt. Ball one. You know, I think part of Homer's issue this year is the fact that we've seen a lot of the pitches that are out of the strike zone that are way out of the strike zone. They are truly wasted pitches, like that one right there, nearly bounce in front of home plate. You want to miss with a pitch, you know, miss three or four inches off the plate, not seven, eight, or nine inches off the plate. They almost picked off Gomez. Good throw right there, right on the bag. is over for Estrada and now he is off the hook as far as a loss is concerned of course he could still get a win there's a little roller that Bailey will bare hand and throws him out so the inning is over but damage done all after the first two are out Brewer scored twice and a 3-3 game
the Brewers at Great American Ballpark the remainder of this weekend. And of course, it's the first Reds four for 48 ticket offer of the year. You buy four view level tickets for $48, and you receive four Reds hats for free. I mean, you can't beat that. Call 513 REDS, visit select Kroger locations, or log on to Reds.com. So here we go once again, starting from scratch. Brewers had a 1 0 lead. Reds tied the game at 1. Reds went ahead 3 1. Brewers tied at 3. And now we get a look at what has been one dynamite bullpen so far this year. And it begins with right hander Brandon Kinsler. Well, really, with the Brewers as bad as they were last year, we mentioned that they only won 74 ball games. But their bullpen was really one of the bright spots. Even though they struggled mightily in the starting pitching department, their bullpen overall was third in earned run average last year, and they've been just as good this year. They flip flopped their their closer, Jim Henderson. He's now a setup guy. Francisco Rodriguez has been lights out, and it will be probably a battle of the bullpens here before it's all said and done. Three runs, eight hits, no errors, five men left on base for the Brewers. Three runs, six hits, no errors, six left for the Reds. Reds bat last of the seventh inning, top of the order. Chris Heisey, Joey Votto, Brandon Phillips, base hit Heisey to begin the inning. Second straight time, Chris has been on base tonight. Hit like a rocket, man. This sounded great coming off the bat. Bring the third baseman in a couple of steps to guard against the possible bunt, and he's got no reaction time at all to get to that ball. Widens his lead over there at first base a little bit. A ball and a strike. Heisey stole third, you may remember. Of course, that was with Estrada on the mound back in the fifth. It's a mighty high leg kick. Now, Kinsler has been altering the amount of time he is holding the baseball. But boy, once he decides to go ahead and throw to the plate, he is picking that leg very, very high into the air. Uh, you're right. Even though he has not given up a stolen base this year, only gave up three last year. Usually relievers don't have that problem. The starters do. As far as trying to shut down a running game. Ball three to bottom. Later in the game, managers a little bit more wary about running themselves out of an inning. Here's the leg kick you're talking about. You know, even though he has a high leg kick, it's still kind of a compact and quick motion to the plate. Fastball, slider, occasionally a changeup, but mainly fastball and slider. Good hitters count here to Votto, three balls and a strike. So that's not a quick move the first. And that's almost a two piece move where you step first and then turn to throw. He's got kind of a long arm arc when he throws over there. So if you're Chris Heisey and you're thinking about stealing here in a 3 1 pitch, wouldn't be a bad idea with Bottle up. You can get a bigger lead than you had. And there's ball four, and the Reds have the first two on. Here in the seventh inning. Now, this is an interesting decision. Now, some may say not a chance. Brandon Phillips 
was batting in the two hole. He's hit leadoff. He's hit virtually everywhere for this Reds team. First and second, nobody out. Would you ask Brandon Phillips to bunt here? If he was batting second, you would ask him to bunt. If he was batting in the leadoff spot and the first two reached in a tie game in the seventh, you'd probably ask him to bunt then. Well, he has one this year. He had four last year. Well, the Brewers don't think for a second he's bunting. And Brandon lays it down. And he will advance the runners. Now, the question is, did he do that on his own? Was he asked to do it? We'll find that out later. But the bottom line is, he gets the job done. Yeah, I'm not really sure I care. And if I'm, if I'm Brian Price, I may not even answer that question. I mean, you got to throw egos out the window. When you're seven and a half games back, and you've got the top place team here at home, and you've got a tie game late, you've got to figure out a way to win a ball game. Put your ego on the shelf for admiration later. Well, I think we both agree with that, but I also think we both know the world we're living in as far as Major League Baseball on most teams. Well, yeah. And I don't know of another number three hitter that I can remember in a long time. And I think it, it illustrates your point with this Reds club and where they are right now. It's still a team game. I mean, you break it down, and some managers are less likely to ask a, a number three hitter to do that. But you also give a three hitter who's struggling a little bit a chance to really contribute. Well, now it's up to Frazier for the Reds to grab that lead once again. And Frazier was the guy who gave him their first and only lead of the night. When he clubbed a two run home run one inning ago. Big, big at bat here for Frazier and the Reds. Strike one. That was a home run swing. Frazier wasn't sure he got it. But into the first row. And for Frazier, his fifth home run of the season. It came with Jay Bruce aboard. Oh, one delivery. A ball and a strike. So in comes Kinsler. Now the Reds have him loaded with one away, trying to break a 3 3 tie. And it's straight up into the air. Two away in the inning. Ball after a couple of fastballs, and it served his purpose by getting Frazier way out on his front foot. And we'll see if he pitches Ludwig the same way that he pitched Frazier, which is fastballs early and then went to a slider on the third pitch. has seen Kinsler three times in his career and has three singles. Now the Reds needing a, a two out hit. Getting began with a single by Heisey. Votto followed with a walk. Brandon Phillips put down a sacrifice advancing the runner after the intentional walk to Bruce. The pop up by Frazier for the second down. And now the 0 1. Almost hit him.
little roller. Down to third baseline and just does roll foul. That's all Ramirez can do. Well, with all the rain that we've had here in Cincinnati in the last week, that grass just really has grown and just slows the ball down. And the infield, of course, is crowned towards foul territory. Every field is, so you, you design it like that so the water will run off the field when it rains. That helped that ball go foul. Now Ludwig was all the way beyond the first base bag. He stretch out a little bit before this one two pitch. Brian Price's team loaded the bases when one out here in the inning. After the Brewers tied it in the top of the inning against Homer Bailey. Ludwig tell himself don't chase the slider down and away and Kinsler saying throw the slider down and away. No he's not either going to tie him up with a fastball and he went around. Good pitch. We're tied at three but going to the eighth. According to U.S. News and World Report's best children's hospitals in America. 3-3 game. Starters, Homer Bailey is still in there. Marco Estrada off the hook. Six innings, three runs. Bailey was given a 3-1 lead into the seventh where he retired the first two batters. But then allowed a single through the hole in the right field by Gene Segura. Had a bouncer hit off his foot that went for an infield base hit by Ricky Weeks. And then on the very first pitch to Carlos Gomez, he hit a rope to the wall and left center field, driving in the tying run. Three, four, and five in a batting order. And Bailey a strike, one and one on Jonathan Lucroy. For Bailey, his 95th pitch of the game. Ramirez to follow and then over Bay. Been the bottom part of the batting order that has hurt Bailey here tonight. I mean, yes, Gomez did have the two run double. But most of the Milwaukee base hits have come from the bottom part of the order. In fact, five of their eight hits have come from six, seven, eight, or nine.
Two and two to count. Phillips will back up and have time to throw out Luke Kroeler. Well, as you continue to tweet your photos using hashtag Ohio fan photo, here's today's fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. Jeffrey, we thank you very much. Ramos Ramirez 0 for 3 is fly to left bounced into a double play and popped out to right we brought up Ramirez back in the lineup tonight for the first time twice has recently been hit on that left elbow and you see the padding he has on there tonight and Ramirez now hitless in his last 24 at bats Really most of his problems in fact this stretch began when he was hit initially on that elbow and then hit a second time. A little less than a week ago. I think the fastball is coming out of Homer's hand better now than it was early in the game. We've seen this so many times before. He gets up over the 90 pitch mark, and all of a sudden, he's able to kind of put it into a second gear with this the speed of the fastball. That last one, 95, that might be his best of the night. Came right back at 96. And that is strike three called, and Ramirez did not like it. Two away in the inning. Situation where Homer misses his spot, but he hits a better spot. Than the one he was aiming at. Wanted it down, wanted it up and in. That's where Tucker Barnhart is set up. Instead, he carries it a little bit long and it's down and away, right on the knees. So now Lyle Overbay, he's 0 for 3 tonight, is struck out looking, bounced out to Brandon and flied out to Ryan Ludwig. Two and one on over Bay. Trying to finish off a perfect eighth inning. His spot due up third in the bottom half. Full count on Lyle Overbay. Chris Davis would be next. Will be pitch number 108 on the night, and undoubtedly the final pitch of the night, perhaps for Homer Bailey if he can get the final out and he should get it here Phillips will throw him out Bailey goes eight strong tonight allows three runs Reds will bat at the bottom of the eighth for the three three game.
Next interviews with Brian Price, some of the players. Reds Live brought to you by Kings Honda. So here we go, bottom half of the eighth inning. Interesting story on Jim Henderson. He was a guy that came out of nowhere to become their closer last year. Did not throw the ball well in spring training, but not one time did Ron Rennicky tell anybody during the spring that he was no longer the closer. On opening day, on a save opportunity, when the gate opened in the bullpen, everybody figured it would be Henderson. It turned out to be Francisco Rodriguez. And Henderson, most of this year, has been pitching in mop-up roles until recently when they feel like some of that stuff we saw last year started to come back. We'll see tonight. Well, they say more recently than not, he has really thrown the ball well, but you can't argue with what Francisco Rodriguez has done. He's had 13 save opportunities, and he's converted every one of them. Kinsler pitched his way into trouble and then out of trouble, his only inning of work. Reds had the bases loaded with only one out in a 3 3 game and could not break the tie. Two walks, one intentional, a hit, a strikeout, and no runs in one inning for Kinsler. Nothing in two on Kozai. And that one looped into shallow right. It'll fall in a hit. So another multi hit game for Kozai. And you say another one. He had multi hit games and now three in a row. Well, when he was really slumping, when you hit a ball like that, it goes right to the second baseman. Tonight, both of his hits have been either the infield variety, like his last one was, or a little blooper on a no two pitch, a waste pitch by Henderson. He just puts the very end of the bat on the ball, he flares it into right field. So for so long it looked so dark for Kozar he's coming around. Now you may remember the Reds asked Tucker Barnhart to put down a sacrifice a couple of days ago and he couldn't do it. Well not very good form right there. He's got that bat perfectly flat. What you want to do is keep an angle on the bat so the bat head is slightly higher than your hands. It's a lot easier to get the ball down when you do that. That was in the game, in fact, here last night when the Reds at the time were only behind one run. And he gets it down to play. Whoop. Thought about it. And barely gets the out of the hustling Barnard and give him a sacrifice so he gets the job done. Now the Reds will go to their bench. Now he gets the ball down and Henderson the time to think about it is not when you pick the ball up but before you feel the ball you've got to gauge in your head about how fast that runner is how fast you get the ball and you just have to turn and fire to second base if you think you're going to get him oftentimes even if you don't get the runner at second they can still turn and get that runner going to first because normally on a sacrifice the batter runner really doesn't bust it down the line all that hard. Ryan Pena announced as a pinch hitter for Homer Bailey. Bailey goes eight innings, eight hits, three runs earned, had a walk and four strikeouts. 108 pitches in the game for Bailey. Pena hit a home run his first as a red here last night. And that's oh, in the air. Man. Down the right field line. Go! Just call him a smiling man, and he's had a lot to smile about these last couple of days. Of course, this guy loved to play the game or what? I mean, he is always smiling, none bigger than right now. Launches that ball right off the top of the wall. Well, we were talking about it last night. Eh? You'd be hard pressed, forget baseball. I mean, I'm talking about just in life to meet a guy who smiles more than Brian Payton. So Nissan drive of the game.
That's out there where another former Reds catcher, Ramon Hernandez, broke Milwaukee Brewers' hearts. Remember that on opening day a few years ago, that same spot. That was a three run home run off of their closer. John Axford at the time. I think that may have been one of the only blown saves for him of the entire season. It, it, it might have been the only blown one. Because he ended up saving like, like 15 in a row or something, didn't he? Well, this has been, I mean, Great American Ballpark, that is somewhat of a house of horrors for the Brewers over the last few years. Reds now with a 5 to 3 lead, and Votto takes outside ball one. They have lost 13 of the last 18 games that they have played here in Cincinnati, the Brewers, that is. And there's the home run swing. By the Phantom Cam breaking it down to 5,000 frames per second. Brian Payne, you can watch that all night long, over and over again. Inning not over after the base hit by Heisey. All started with a single by Cozart on a two strike pitch. Bart Hart in the butt, off the bench. Comes Pena, two run home run. Motto in the air to left field. This will back up and up against the wall. Rounding third is Heisey. They're going to hold him there. Steve Smith pointing at that bag stand right now. And that's a double by Votto. Why well, didn't look like he got all that coming off the bat? I think it fooled Chris Davis and actually hit over Davis's head at the base of the wall. The ball went off the bat like it was going to carry a little bit. It just seemed to die. Another shot from our phantom cam and. Ranger trying to play a little add on. So now the infield in, and the Reds have a chance now to just bury the Brewers here in the eighth inning. Phillips trying to add on to this lead. He's not worried about whether it's a save chance or not for Jonathan Broxton. Broxton's ready to go. Oh, and one to Brandon Phillips. And fooled by that pitch, and he's quickly behind, nothing in two. Base side and three rows out of play. The Fan Express to Reds Country back on the road again. And to get your group on board, the Fan Express call the Reds Group Sales at 765 7600. Good ball game here tonight. Back and forth. Brewers jumped out in front, 1 0. Reds tied it at 1. Reds went up 3 1. Brewers tied it at 3. Reds have taken a 5 3 lead, looking for more here in the bottom of the eighth. And Brandon Phillips strikes out swinging. Phillips has come to the plate tonight with first and third and one out, second and third and one out. A double play, and now this. Yeah, Brandon tipped that ball and he was hoping against hope that Luke Croy couldn't hold on to it. 
So by getting Brandon Phillips out, they open the base at first base is still open, of course. And now you're going to give that to Jay Bruce. Second time in two plate appearances that he's had an intentional walk. Third time overall that Bruce has walked tonight. He's been on base now four times. He has a single and two official at bats. And now Ron Runneke will come out to the mound as he's going to stay with Henderson, or is he going to bring on Rob Wooten from his bullpen? There's your answer. So Henderson. Treated rather rudely by the Red Legs here tonight. Four hits, two runs so far. They're loaded. Wooten v. Frazier when we return. This will be our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. Sports one is back a big doubleheader comes and the Cardinals renewing a great rivalry and then Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers take on Kansas City. Yeah, I got it. great. That's Fox Sports one and one Eastern on Fox Sports one and streaming live on Fox Sports go. All right, new pitcher now, Rob Wooten coming on to replace Henderson and walks in with the bases loaded. Only his fifth game of the year. Well, he's been up and down a couple of times with the Brewers. He was the last player cut out of spring training. And from the looks of it, he likes that split finger fastball as his off off speed pitch. He needs to throw strikes. Of course, we don't see the Brewers play every day, and we know they've had to use a lot of bullpen recently, either due to extra inning games. They had extra innings on Monday and Tuesday and then their starter Matt Garza got bombed yesterday and lasted only three innings gave up five runs found out later he said he was hurt. But boy it is very interesting that you would take a guy who was your closer last year out of the game with the bases loaded and two men out and bring in a guy who yes is pitched in the big leagues. But pitching in only his fifth game this year. And Frazier just swung at ball three. Well, he really did him a favor right there, figuring he was definitely going to get a strike on a 2 0 pitch and didn't recognize that slider. Look how far that ball is off the plate. 2 and 1 to count on Frazier. Bases loaded, two out. Two and two. Well, it goes to show you, you know, Jim Henderson, as good as he was last year for the Brewers, he was still pretty much a career minor league pitcher. And all of a sudden, as you said, came out of nowhere onto the scene. 
that's one reason why maybe they didn't stick with him longer than you would think they would. And two down to Frazier. I see the runner at third, Votto at second, Jay Bruce at first. Reds have scored twice on the pinch hit, two run home run by Brian Pena. Snapping a 3 3 tie here in the eighth inning. Trying to add to the two run lead. Still three and two. Now he's stayed with the same type of pitch. Every pitch up there, either a slider or a splitter. And he stayed away each of the six pitches he has thrown. Once more. And once more, we'll try it again. It's like Rob Wooten just likes to throw that cutter. It kind of goes away from Frazier, but the more Frazier sees it, you figure the more he can figure it out. Lead two on the way. And ball four to Frazier, plates a run on the walk. Reds lead is 6 3. guy throwing a cutter the way Rob Wooten throws a cutter and you're playing the infield defense the way the Brewers are I mean that right side of the infield is wide open here for Ryan Ludwig so you just tell yourself you get a pitch if the pitcher throws it where he wants it it's going to be down and away perfect pitch to hit in that hole Somewhat vindicated right here because he's hit the ball hard, almost in the same spot three times now, and finally has something to show for it. A look on Henderson. He gives up all five runs in just two thirds of an inning. Now, this is something the Brewers really have not seen all year long. That's how good this bullpen has been for this team so far. All three inherited runners. Have scored since Wooten came into this game. Brewers relievers have only allowed four all year of 23 inherited runners before tonight to score. That's the best ratio in the entire National League. League average is 27%. The Brewers at 17%. Tops in the league, but not tonight. Ozark was a guy who got this whole party started. Well, that's why there are a lot of people saying, hey, there's no way the Brewers can continue to play the way that at the pace they play. I mean, you went 20 games, 19 in April, one, of course, in the last day of March. I mean, the most games they've won in a month last year was only 15. So they bested that by four games this year. 
That's a tough pace to keep up. Hey, the other thing is, you know, when you're a first place ball club, whether you like it or not, you have an extra bullseye on you. And the Reds know full well how important this four game series is. Yeah, look, it's not like the Reds have done it like the Cardinals have done it, where they've been good for, you know, the last decade plus. But when you win 90 or more games, three of the last four years, you go to the playoffs, three of the last four years. As Cozart is hit with that pitch and that'll load the bases. The Brewers can downplay it all they want, and they're the ones that do have the big lead. But make no mistake, Ron Renneke would like to see his team come in here and set a statement from the very get go that the Brewers should now be, you know, in the same conversation with the Reds and the Pirates and the Cardinals in the Central. Well, those 74 games that they won last year, that was the worst record the Brewers have had going all the way back to 2004. That was really before the rebuilding program that they had down there where they started having some pretty good teams. Boy, they draw so well. Three million plus. I mean, they, they have got it. I, mean, I shouldn't say surprisingly. I mean, regardless of sport, really, uh, the Wisconsin in general are great fans. Oh. You want to get out of the cold weather, you go to a ball game. And there's plenty of cold weather to go around up there. But for a market the size of Milwaukee, which basically is the same size as Cincinnati, fractionally different. I mean, you're rolling in three million plus for the last handful of years since the, the rebirth, if you will, of this Brewers franchise. One and one to count on Tucker Barnhart. The dribbler up the first baseline. And that will be the final out of the inning, but a, a big one indeed. It started with a two run home run to break the tie by Brian Pena. Reds tack on three more and lead by five. We go to the ninth. Hot dog play of the game. Very first pitch, very first swing. Gomez drives one to right center. A spectacular play by Billy Hamilton. His left hand, he injured the third and fourth knuckles on that hand, landing on it, and diving into the air and coming up with a catch. He left the game, stayed through the top half of the inning, but was taken down for Chris Heisey, leading off the bottom of the inning. And hopefully that's not anything that's going to sideline Hamilton very long. Well, Jonathan Broxton was getting ready for a save chance. And since he's already hot, meaning up and ready to come into a game, Brian Price says I'll get him in there. Yeah, you know, some managers wouldn't do this. They would get him up and let him get warmed up, ready to go into a game for a save situation or a possible save. And then when a save is no longer in fact, then you bring somebody else in. But as Brian Price, I think, as a former pitcher and pitching coach, 
realizes that getting up and pitching in the bullpen, getting hot and ready to get in, is almost like pitching an inning. So you get the big guy a little bit of a inning, hopefully a nice easy inning. 93 mile per hour fastball in there a strike. Chris Davis, Mark Reynolds, Gene Segura. Homer Bailey with that big offensive explosion for the Reds in the bottom of the eighth. Is the pitcher of record tonight. He went eight innings allowed eight hits three runs. That's the deepest Bailey has gone into. In any of his now six starts of the year. Bailey had given up only one run through the first six. And then allowed three straight hits in the seventh after two were out. Milwaukee tying the game. But he went through a one two three eight. Brian Price left him out there. Fly ball to Jay Bruce at the track one out. And certainly a better results tonight for Homer Bailey gave up eight hits three runs in eight innings. He only struck out four but he only walked one better. Well he had to stay stubborn with his stuff. Because they hit the ball hard in the first inning. He had three hits in the second inning including that. Inning in which they got the first run off of Bailey. I think overall he worked really well with Tucker Barnhart. Nice combination. I think Barnhart has something to do with Homer's success, and Homer stuck with it and gave the ball club a good solid performance tonight. It is interesting when you look at, at, at Bailey's numbers tonight, is that one is swung on and fouled out of play. In the two scoring innings the Brewers had, they came on three consecutive hits, both in the second inning and the seventh inning. Mm -hmm. In the second inning with one out. Three straight singles, one run. Seventh inning, two outs, single infield hit, double. Oh, and two on Reynolds. He'll chase another one of those. Now and out away from giving the Reds the opening game of this four game series. We'll have all four of the games for you here on Fox Sports Ohio. And we must remind you once more there are tickets available. Big Star Wars weekend. Nine games tomorrow and Saturday. If you're coming Sunday, new to the Flying Pig Marathon, that will be a 4 10 start Sunday afternoon. Rare indeed. And this ought to do it. Cozart lets it fly. Reds win the opener 8 3. So they shave a lead off that deficit in the National League Central. Goes down to six and a half. And tomorrow night will be Mike Leake against Willie Peralta. Reds Live will get on the air at 6.30 tomorrow night. We invite you to join us in. We still have more to come. So stay with us right here. Reds win on Fox Sports Ohio.